Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and welcome to my poorly lit garage. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some vintage Macs, and I'm going to show you the process that I go through whenever I get one of these new arrivals. We're going to open it up, make sure there's no leaking batteries inside, and see what needs attention before we plug it into the wall. So let's get started. One of the first things you want to do is look up information about the model you have. That should give you information about taking it apart, any tools that you may need to do so, and give you an understanding for what you're getting yourself into. Now this is a Macintosh 2CI. There's usually a screw here, but more often than not, people have removed it over the years. So how you open this machine is quite simple. You just take the lid off. Now the hard drive was already removed from this machine, but I'm just getting a visual inspection for the system, making sure there's no mice nests or anything inside of here before we blow out some of the dust. Now that's some dust. Now we could disassemble this further, but I think I got most of the dust out. So let's take it inside. All right, so we have our Macintosh in the basement. So we just plug it in and turn it on, right? Absolutely not. These things require some maintenance, especially if they've been sitting around for 35 some odd years. So the first thing I'd like to do is strip it apart and see exactly what's going on inside of this machine. We don't have any add-on cards despite this cash card that was included in most of these systems. And the rest of the system is actually quite modular. There's only one screw, I believe, that's still inside of here that's preventing from taking this thing all apart. Other Macs will vary and you'll have to look at the manuals or the service manual to see the take-apart guide to make sure you can get everything out of there properly. But for this one, it's a piece of cake. First, I'm going to work on the power supply. This lifts up, although the connector can be seated quite firmly onto the logic board. But once this power supply is up, it'll give us access to other things that we have to remove. All right, there it comes. And that is a Delta Electronics brand power supply. And you can see the rest of the machine is right there. Now, there is one screw we have to remove. That's in the center of this piece of plastic that holds the hard drive and the disk drive below it. And that's removed. And we're going to unplug the floppy disk drive. And then we're just going to take this whole thing apart. There's this little latch where my hand is here. I'm going to push that and the whole thing is just lifted out of there. And you can see that there's still a battery inside of this computer. But it looks like it did not leak. So that's good. I've showed this a few times before, but if you put the blade of your screwdriver between the metal and the plastic bits of the holder, you could remove the top lid of that battery holder fairly easily, and then you could just pull out the battery. So this battery is from Germany, not West Germany like sometimes we see, but still pretty old. This has a date of 1992 on it. Next up, I'll remove the cables from the logic board. We have the SCSI data cable here. Then we have a power cable for the hard drive. There's a little clip on this one that comes off. The next step is removing the speaker. There's this one little cable here, and there's a piece of plastic you just push inside and the whole thing just clips out of there. And now we have our logic board with our memory, and that's it. Now we do want to remove the board from this system so we can get a better look at those capacitors. On this system, it's just as easy as taking a hold of something sturdy like the PDS slot and just shifting the whole board down. The board does get stuck on this little light bar that shows the light for the computer through the front of the case. But once you clear that, you should be able to just free the board. And it comes out quite easily. And there we have it, our Macintosh 2CI logic board. From the outside, this computer looks like it's in great condition. Unfortunately, the logic board has some issues with it. We could clearly see some corrosion on the board and leaking capacitors. So those are two issues we'll definitely have to deal with. And through the magic of one YouTube live stream later, and there you have it. Our logic board is looking good as new. And it only took three hours of hot soldering under a microscope. Most of the damage was isolated in this area, which contains three chips and four capacitors. Unfortunately, those chips are vital to the computer starting up, so this startup circuitry area is always one to look out for. Thankfully, the damage wasn't too, too bad. I mean, well, the chips and capacitors were literally falling off the board. You could see more of that in my live stream. I was able to fully repair that area, and the computer starts up normally. Thankfully, the chips required in that area are still made today, so if you have one that is too far gone, you might be able to order replacements. Now, this board still requires an ultrasonic clean. It is a bit dirty and dusty still, but I do want to put it inside of the case to show everything is working. 
Now there is one important thing that we intentionally did not cover, and that's the power supply. I have a third party power supply that I will be using instead for my testing. However, I have a big suspicion that this thing likely needs some servicing. After all, it's just as old as the logic board. And in some of these models, there could be up to six Rifa capacitors hidden inside. My good friend John of the Big Bad Biologist Big Bad Bench YouTube channel has had some great times taking apart these power supplies. And I am being sarcastic. These things are a beast to deal with, and that's not something I want to deal with anytime soon. So for now, we're going to be using a third party power supply, but if you have one of these old power supplies, I would suggest you open it up and inspect it carefully before you go plugging it in. Here we go. Ah, there we go. Nice. And if I could uh, operate this like that, there we go. We can see we have five megabytes of RAM and our Macintosh 2CI is working just great. When taking in a new vintage machine, you always want to make sure you can get a close look at it. Make sure there's no corrosion, no leaking capacitors, and no exploded batteries. Some things like leaking capacitors can be remedied quite easily with the right tools and the right know-how. However, if you go powering things on in an unknown state, you can make that problem 10 times worse. Wait, look inside it before powering it on? What kind of hippy dippy nonsense is that, Steve? Ah, you've been sitting on the shelf for 15 years. <coughs> I'm sure you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Power cable down. There we go. The cable plugged in. And last but not least. So when it comes to these vintage computers, remember that the condition on the inside is just as important, if not more important, than the condition on the outside. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I also have another video about vintage Apple basics, so if you're new to the Mac, you might want to check that out. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you right here next time on Mac 84.